أغمض عينيك وتذكر أغمض عينيك وتذكر تسبيحا حلوا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon all the prophets and messengers who preceded him alayhim as salatu salam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters. It is always a blessing for us to come together and recognize the many great things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does for us. And bearing in mind that there isn't a moment, a minute or a second that passes except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping us and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is having mercy upon us from ways and places that many of us we may never know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you and will love you and will help you in so many ways for the majority of that time you may never know but the test really is even though that Maybe for the majority of the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may keep things away from you or protect you, will you be thankful for those things? Now today, I saw a picture. And this picture was of the holiest place on earth. The purest, the most sacred place on earth. Which no doubt is Makkah. But even more than that, the Kaaba itself, which the Prophet وسلم, spent 13 years in Mecca trying to call his own people to, to serve and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being persecuted and being tortured and oppressed, and then having to leave that place and spending 10 years in Al Medina only to then be given victory <coughs> by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eight years later. That this being the purest of places, the best of places, it was virtually empty at Salat al-Dhuhr today. Virtually empty. And then you ask yourself that the purest of places, the best of places, a place in, in which one salah, one prayer offered in that place is equal to 100,000 prayers. Comparable to any other masjid, 100,000 prayers. But yet for Salat al-Dhuhr, you could count the lines around Al-Ka'bah Sharifa. So the question you ask is that, why is this the case? Why was it so empty at Salat al-Dhuhr today? It was, and I don't think you will find a day in the whole year. And there is no day like today in the whole year that you will find like that at the Ka'bah today. Because all of those people who made that journey or happened to be in Mecca realize that there is only one place to be. Not because that place is any holier or that the salah there is worth any more. Because it is not equal to the salah in the Kaaba or around the Kaaba. Arafat is outside the Haram. But all of those people have gone to another place because our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us and commanded us that those who are performing hajj to be there on this day of Arafah. A day which in all reality to all of us is a day unimaginable to what really happens. When you imagine or you think about two million people attending one place at one time for the space of about six hours. And that every single person there has gone there with their own wishes and desires 
and dreams, everything that you can imagine, that they have gone there, and bearing in mind they've spent maybe one or two or three days in the state of Ihram, and that the weather is amazingly hot. But they have gone there, and they have forsaken families, time, many, many things. But all of that will seem insignificant. Everything else doesn't mean very much. Because being there, and the plains of Arafat, at that time, is only for a chosen, only for a chosen few amount of people. If you think that Muslims are a billion or more around the world, only a few of them are chosen each year to make that journey and call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two million people within the space of those time between Dhuhr and Salat al-Maghrib, how many du'as would any one of you make? And what would you make du'a for? Maybe you have or they would have had lists given to them by other people that ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remember to, to, to grant me this, to grant me that, to help me in this, to help me in that. And you have a list of all these people who ask you to make du'a because you were a chosen person to be there on that day. Just take one example of just one person and maybe the du'as would run into hundreds. Maybe their du'as would run into thousands. Now, when you multiply that by the amount of people that are there, let's say two million or three million, whatever it is, that there are sounds, du'as that are being said repeatedly and over again, and knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears every single sound and hears every single dua on the plains of Arafat. And when you add to that as well, that the millions of Muslims around the world who are not on the plains of Arafat, who are also making dua all around the world, that not one single dua is unheard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single sound, every single dua, even the thoughts that come into your mind, the thoughts that come into your heart, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears that and knows what is in your heart. Knows the level of your sincerity, knows the level of your, or the, or the amount of uh, energy that you have in, in, in making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Allah jalla wa'ala knows what you're going to say in the future before you even say it. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hearing all of these du'as just on this one day, like He subhanahu wa ta'ala does every day, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not sleep, does not slumber, does not feel any tiredness. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم No sleep, no slumber affects Allah jalla wa ala. That 24 hours a day in our existence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everything. And that those sincere servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah jalla wa ala will answer every single dua. When you think about that, you should never, ever, ever feel left alone. Regardless of what position or whatever situation that you are in, that you are never, ever alone. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always hear you. And if you are sincere to Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never ever forsake you. But any shortcomings we have, any down feelings or sadness, that is from ourselves and from shaitan. Because if you're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should know that you're dealing with one who will never forsake you and never leave you. And I'll give you an example. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the masjid once. At a time where it wasn't salah time. And he found a companion whose name was Abu Umama. Radiallahu anhu. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to, he, said to him, مَا الَّذِي أَجْلَسَكَ هُنَا يَا أَبَا أُمَامَ What has made you sit here? It's not prayer time. He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, 
that sadness and all of these thoughts in my mind have overcome me and I don't know what to do and I've got debts I have debts and all these thoughts and sadness and I don't know what to do if somebody comes to you or you're advised or you need advice you have debts or you have something like that something needs sorting out what will you do? Maybe you'll go and say, you know, I need to borrow some money from somebody else to cover that debt because it's being asked to be paid back now. You feeling cold, brother? You feeling cold? Are you? I am, brother. I'm feeling cold as well. I'm almost shivering. There you are. There you are. So we may look for a solution in in finding somebody for us to, to help that, uh, that particular debt that I have. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abu Umama, he said, let me tell you some words. Words. Not let's go to the market and, you know, let's bring up some trade and buying and selling and, and fix up your debts. No. Let me teach you some words that if you say them, that there will be a solution there for you. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you are to repeat this. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-huzun. Wa min al-kasli wal-ajaz. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dayni wa qahr al-rijal. Six things were mentioned. O oh Allah, I seek refuge. You seek Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's protection and help and aid. And this is not a dua that is said with your tongue. Of course it is said with your tongue. But what we are saying here, when it is said, or when you say it, that it comes from your heart. And then it appears on your tongue. That you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you, to help you, to give you aid from al-ham wal hazan or al huzn al hum are those thoughts that may occur in the future that haven't happened yet. So you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from those thoughts about things which maybe you don't have knowledge of, but that you think that they're going to happen. And al huzn or that sadness about those things which have happened in the past. So you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for about all of those potential thoughts that the shaitan may bring to you about things that have happened in the past and also in the future. And also from al-ajaz, al-kasri wal-ajaz. That you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being lazy and not doing anything about the situation that you're in. And also from al-ajaz, from the inability to do something. You don't want to be in a position where that you can't do anything. You want to be in a position where that you have the ability to do something and so then you go and do it. And fifthly, did you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's aid and protection from the burden of any debts and likewise from the oppression of other men? These were the words that were taught to Abu Umama radiallahu anhu. He replied, Ni'mul kalam wa ni'mul qa'il. He said, How blessed that speech was, and how blessed the one who taught me it was. He went away and continued to make this dua until his debts were removed. You may ask how his debts were removed. All you need to know at the end of the story is that he had no more debts, and he had no more bad thoughts, and he had no more sadness. That first and foremost, he turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his supplication. And that every single Muslim who turned up and went to that place today in Arafat, who had that great blessing to be there, and likewise here, if we are fasting or not fasting, whatever the case may be, but we have come to hear beneficial words. Or throughout the day, I praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah jalla wa ala hears that. And that you will be rewarded for that. That you asked for something and know and you have that within yourself 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer that supplication without any doubt. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith on Qudsi. And this hadith on Qudsi is a hadith on Awdheem. It, it is a great hadith. Because the meaning is so profound. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us that I am with my servant as he thinks of me. So the greater thoughts, the, the greater the husn of van, they say in Arabic. The more you have, you know, uh, the higher status that you have, that Allah has in your life, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has you even more. Because if you read the remaining part of that hadith, it talks about a person, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a person who, if he comes to me the distance of a hand span, I go towards him uh, the, uh, the length of a, an arm span. And if he comes to me jogging, or comes to me yeah, jogging, I will come to him running. So whatever you do towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do more for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua and you have certainty of that. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you what you are asking for immediately. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from what you're asking for because you believe it is good for you. Wallahu ya'alamu wa antum la ta'alamun. But Allah knows and you don't know. That thing that you're asking for is not good for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps it away from you. Or thirdly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save that what you're asking for <clears throat> until the hereafter. So whatever the situation, the, the, the true believer who understands that dua is in this manner like this, they are in a win, win, win. Or beneficial, beneficial, beneficial situation. That there is no khasara for, there's no loss for them at all. Only when they allow themselves to listen to shaitan, to bring them down, to bring negativity, to bring about pessimism, and then ultimately to have bad thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because it's important for us to understand that these are the paths that the shaitan will take, to bring about sadness and thoughts and things like that. And then eventually saying, why isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answering my dua? What, what, what's happening here? That there's a goal that he wants you to reach. It is important for us to completely turn away from that kind of thinking. Your dua, will it be answered immediately? Can you say that I was so sincere today? The Prophet ﷺ, 13 years in Mecca. The Muslims being martyred. Some of the Muslims being held and shown their own parents being killed in front of them. Ammar ibn Yasir, radiyallahu an, who was made to look at his own mother being martyred in front of him. Bilal ibn Rabah, radiyallahu anhu, being punished in the intense heat. Mata Nasrullah, when is the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ya Rasulullah, we are upon the haq, we are upon the truth. But what is happening here? The punishment, the oppression is becoming too much. The Prophet ﷺ informed them that the people in the past, that he would say, La ilaha illallah, that they would be placed on something like this, a table. And the minshar, like a saw, would be brought and to cut them in half because of their belief. Had it reached this stage like this? Had it reached this extent that the believers were being chopped in half like this? To this extent? This is what the example that the Prophet Ali wanted to give them for them to be patient. And the du'as and our attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not how you want it or how you like it. Because you should know that you're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is more merciful to you than your own mother, more merciful to you than your own father, who will proclaim, who will proclaim their love to you quite rightly so. Because nobody in this dunya will love you like your mother and your father. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be more merciful to you than them. This is who you are calling upon. And once or the sooner that we realize this, 
who we are speaking to and who we are calling upon, the sooner that our lives will change. The sooner that things will change for the better. That there is no such thing as pessimism or negativity or sadness, but rather there is optimism and that there is hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Ibrahim salam was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take his family in the middle of nowhere, and the story mentioned in the Quran, and then to tell his family to stay there, and then he was walking away. And he left his wife Hajar and his son Ismail alayhi salam, began walking away. After a time, Hajar began to ask him, shouting, where are you going? We're in the middle of nowhere here. Are you going to leave us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded Ibrahim to leave his family there and for him to go. She was calling him, calling him, but he did not turn around and he did not answer. Until she said to him, has Allah commanded you with this? Then Ibrahim alayhi salam turned around and said, Ajal. This was the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what was her reply? She was not a Nabi or Nabiya. She wasn't a prophet. But her attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was that she said, Inna Allah layyudayyana. Then therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forsake us. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you to do go, for you to go and for us to stay here, then we will be fine. Quite simply. There is no water here. There's nothing here. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look after us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ni'm al mawla wa ni'm al nasir. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of masters and the best of the one who will help and give victory to the true believers. Ayyub alayhi salam. So many years was suffering from the illness, but called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anni masani al-dhur That a harm has afflicted me O oh Allah, make me from the patient Yes Inna wajadanahu sabira Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he found Ayyub alayhi salam A patient servant But when he made this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This affliction has 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 finished me off وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ But you are the most merciful. That affliction that has come to you, that difficulty or the trial that has come to you, even in the form of a blessing, subhanAllah. There's a trial that you are given a child, a wife, or wealth, whatever the case may be, that is a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How will you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because we are all here brothers and sisters, for a very, very short time. Don't be deceived. And don't deceive yourself when you think that you are convincing yourself if you're asked when you will die. Maybe at 60 or 70. Even that, that's nothing. If you live for 100 years, it's nothing. When you compare to what we are waiting. What we are waiting for is eternity, which will have absolutely no end. Imma fil jannati or imma fil nar. Either in the blessed paradise, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from inhabitants of the jannah, or the hellfire. It is not logical at all that the person would risk forsaking just a few years in this worldly life for having an eternity of blessings, of mercy, and even if you think about, if you just want to think about, or fo focus on one thing, because there are many things you can think about in the Jannah, what you would like. Maybe you can think about having a nice car, or a house, or, you know, worldly things. But of course, you may like those things, and that's fine. But if there's one thing, that is something, you know, that really is really close to you is that I would like to meet Rasulullah 
and I'd like to talk to him. If that was one thing that really allows me to focus, and I'll hold on to that one thing. That any time I feel like sadness or I feel down, I will allow myself to go beyond that and think that I would like to be from the people of Jannah. And I would like to, to be with Nabi al Rahman, the Prophet of Mercy, the one that my whole time in this worldly life. I knew halal and haram. I learned it from him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Or if it is something else. But you have a focus to allow yourself to achieve that goal, and never be uh, never be swayed or turned away from that. Never allow the shaytan or regard, regardless of your situation to turn you away from that. Because the sooner we realize that whom we are addressing and speaking to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sooner, believe me, wallahi al-azim, the sooner every single one of us, our lives will change. There is no mustahil with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no impossibility. Whatever you wish or you desire for, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give that to you. You just need to have that certainty and knowledge and attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the first thing that comes to your mind, even if it is the first steps of your child to walk, or it is their first words, the first thing that you will remember, who placed that happiness in your heart? Who allowed you that enjoyment to see your child talk, or walk, or eat, or whatever the case may be, whatever enters into your heart that makes you feel happy, who gave that to you? It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at all times, on all occasions, firstly and lastly, that you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is only the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will allow any single one person to have a true happiness in this world and ultimately in the hereafter. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be from the accepted people on this blessed day today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all forms of misguidance and sadness and any waswasa from a shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the hajj of all of those people who have made hajj this particular year. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to make hajj once again or for the first time in the future. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer all of our supplications, whether they are small du'as or big du'as, whatever they may be, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer every single one of them. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you leave this dunya in a state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to die in a state or in a time where our, our last speech is La ilaha illallah. Jazakumallah uh, khayra. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الحمد لله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الحمد لله سبحان الله